think we're there. Thank you, Mandali, for joining this session. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kamalaki Mataji, Janrat Param, Shila Prabhupada, Kija Guru Maharaj, Kija Priti Dasi, Prashalok. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Priti Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All good to Shila Prabhupada, all good to Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji, for joining. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kamalaki Mataji. Please go ahead, Mataji. Okay. Hare Krishna Kamodiki Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the assembled devotees. And this is Indulekha Karuna Devidasi from Lincoln. Hare Krishna Indulekha Karuna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining Mataji. Hare Krishna. Very nice poster. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Kamadiki Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisance. So, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas. Thank you so much, Mataji, for your very warm welcoming. And uh, thanks for the chanting as well. This is Preeti Vilasini Devidasi from California. Hare Krishna, Preeti Vilasini Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining, Mataji. And encouraging me. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Kama Dikhi Mataji Dhanavad Pranams All glories to Shila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas. This is Kirti Dasandri Dasi. Hare Krishna Kirti Dasandri Mataji Please accept my number of essences. All glories to Shila Prabhupada and all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining Mataji and giving your valuable time and association to us this morning. Hare Krishna. If there is no one else to announce, Krishna Sundari Mataji, welcome. Please accept my humble obeisances. Please and give us your very valuable association and using your valuable time. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Let's take over the call. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Kamadaki Mataji. And thank you, everyone, for joining. That's what we know. That your voice is very low. <coughs> yes, Mataji, today, I think so. You all have to bear with me. So oh, okay. I'm not feeling well. And I have a sore throat. I have a back pain because of which today I cannot come oh, with you also. So, uh -huh. <clears throat> so you, should, you should have taken rest. That's fine. So uh, gradually I'll try to increase my voice. So just bear with me. Yeah. Because today's a uh, um, glorious okay. yeah. Welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference today's class. Will, will be given by her grace, Kirti Dasmari Mataji, on the topic of Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Antalila, Chapter 17, and text number 24 onwards. Please, Kirti Dasmari Mataji, I, I hope you can still care and do this. You, are, you have come, so maybe you will do it. Thank you. Please give us some whatever little net net you can give. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Kamadiki Mataji. And thank you everyone for joining us, for giving your valuable time. So we'll start now. <clears throat> Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhatta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nidhananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So we are reading from Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ante Leela Chapter 17 entitled The Lord's Bodily Transformations and today we'll start from text number 24 and we'll cover the whole section today. So we'll go from 24 to 38. 
So, text number 24. Sanketa venu na de ratha Ani kunja ghare Kunjera chalila Krishna krida kare bare Translation. He brought Srimati Radharani to a bower by signaling with his flute. Then he entered within that bow to perform pastimes with her. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Mandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Laruta Shri Vishak Sahagana Ragunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakham Vitam Shri Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha Kalpa Tarubhascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatarine Guruve Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namo Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langaya Tegiram Yad Kripahata Maham Vande Shri Guru Dina Tarina Hare Krishna So thank you all so much for sharing your valuable time and I'm extremely sorry for today's thing that I'll not be able to come on video and I don't know how much my throat is going to support but as we recited right Mukham Karothi Vajhalam that even a dumb person, dumb man person can speak with the mercy of Gurudev. So just relying on this verse, I just trying to attempt with today's session, though extremely not feeling well today, but pretty sure that with all your prayers, wishes and blessings, I'll be able to relay some message that Shila Prabhupada wants to convey and Krishna Das Kaviraj wants to convey some messages from these beautiful esoteric verses. So please sh shower your heartfelt prayers, wishes and blessings. So we'll start now. This is text number 24 where this translation is that he brought Srimati Radharani to a bower by signaling with his flute. So he is none another than our dear Krishna. To a bower. Bower means a kunja. Okay, so this is actually the difference between the language. You know, in English it's a, it says bower, but how sweet it is when we say in Hindi or Bengali it's kunja. The Nikunj that the uh, Sakis, the Gopis, they create just with a mood so that the divine couple can come and relish their intimate pastimes. So, anyways, Krishna he signaled through his flute and he called upon Srimati Radharani and brought her to a kunja. And then he entered within that bower to perform the pastimes with her. So let's quickly do a recap, like what's happened in these first 23 verses. I'll not go each and every verse, but just a quick recap that we know that Mahaprabhu is in his Ante Dila pastimes, where he is in Radha Bhav, and now he is relishing the mood of Srimati Radharani. 
And uh, often now it has become a daily practice that how Mahaprabhu, though externally was performing all the worldly duties of taking shower, going to Jagannath temple, seeing Lord Jagannath, doing his Gayatris and taking lunch. But often he used to go to his internal consciousness in his Radha Bhav, where he would relish the association of Krishna time to time. So, <clears throat> it, you know, in the previous chapter also, we saw that how Mahaprabhu, he crossed all the locked doors and he, you know, somehow ended up in that go shed, the cow shed, the go shala of, of Jagannath Puri. So this time also in this chapter also, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is now quoting that seeing Mahaprabhu's condition, Sarup Damodar Goswami and Ramananda Rai were totally you know, in, in anxious that, you know, we should somehow not let Mahaprabhu go into so much trance that, you know, Mahaprabhu sometimes seems that he has left his body and he becomes so unconscious. So they try to, uh, you know, when Mahaprabhu used to sleep, what they do, they'll just close all the doors and Govinda, his personal servant, would always safeguard outside and see that nothing happens to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And sometimes, you know, Govinda is also accompanied by Sarup Damodar Goswami and sometimes Rai Ramananda, where they would stay outside and would just make sure that nothing happens to Mahaprabhu. Now, this fine one day again, the same thing happened. Govinda was outside and Mahaprabhu was inside and he was doing a loud Sankirtan. And, uh, but then what happened that suddenly Mahaprabhu heard Krishna's flute. And as soon as he heard Krishna's flute, you know, definitely he went into that internal consciousness and in great ecstasy, he left that room. And he went to the cow shed, which was on the southern side of the Simha Dwara of Jagannath Puri temple. And there among cows, he felt unconscious. Now outside the room where Govinda was safeguarding, when he didn't hear any of this uh, Kirtan, he felt, un he felt really anxious and he opened the door and he saw that Mahaprabhu was nowhere. So he immediately, with the help of Sarup Damodar Goswami and Rai Ramananda, they went out with the torch and finally they saw Mahaprabhu lying unconscious in the cow shed. All the cows were sniffing Mahaprabhu's body and Mahaprabhu was not responding. And when the devotees also tried to check upon Mahaprabhu, you know, they couldn't feel any sign of consciousness in Mahaprabhu's body. The devotees actually tried to rouse Lord by various means, but they couldn't. So the, what they did is they just lifted Mahaprabhu and brought him back home. And there, you know, he they all started doing loud Sankirtan in his ears. So after hearing this loud Sankirtan, immediately the Lord regained his consciousness and his whole body returned to normal. But as soon as, you know, they brought uh, Mahaprabhu back, you know, Mahaprabhu was still in his partial external consciousness, not fully. And then he started revealing that, you know, what had happened to him. So he said that actually I was, I heard a flute. I heard Krishna's flute and I went to Vrindavan. And there I saw Krishna was playing on his flute in the pasturing grounds. And then he quotes this verse that after uh, playing the flute in the pasturing grounds, uh, Krishna signaled Srimati Radharani to come to a kunja. And then both of them entered into that kunja to perform the pastimes. And then Mahaprabhu said that I also entered Krishna behind them because I couldn't control myself. I was so much captivated by the sound of the flute and the sound of the ornaments that Krishna was wearing that even I couldn't stop myself and I also followed both of them in that kunja. 
and there Mahaprabhu said that I saw, I saw Krishna and the gopis enjoying all kinds of pastimes while laughing and joking with each other. And hearing them enchanted the joy of my ears. You know, I was so much happy. But just then, Hena Kale Tumi Sada Kola Hala Kari. But just then you all, you know, started making this tumultuous sound. Ami iha lana aila balat kare bari. That by force you all brought me back here in this Chaganath Puri. I was in Vrindavan and I was there with Radha and Krishna. I was seeing all the gopis enjoying and, you know, sharing their jokes and their laughter. And just then you all made such a tumultuous sound and you brought me here by force that I could no longer hear these voices, these voices, these sounds, these ornaments, sounds of the ornaments or the sounds of the flute. I'm, I'm bereft of all this. And then in great ecstasy, Krishna, Mahab, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he told Sarup Tamudar Goswami, he said, because you all brought me here, I could no longer hear the nectarian voices of Krishna and the gopis, nor could I hear the sounds of their ornaments or the flute. So he said to Sarup Damodar Goswami, Bhavesha Sarupa Kare Gada Gadavani, you know, his voice was choked up. In faltering voice, he was requesting Sarup Damodar Goswami, Karna Trishnaya Mare, please satisfy my ears. Pada Rasayana Sumi, I want to hear. Pada means hear words. Please recite some words, something which is Rasayana, something which is relishable. My ears are dying of thirst. Please recite something so that I can quench this thirst. Let me hear it. Then Sarup Goswami, understanding the position and the mood of Mahaprabhu. Sarupa Goswami Prabhu Bhava Janiya. He could understand that what Mahaprabhu is going through, what are the emotions that are going through in Mahaprabhu's heart. Bhagavata Rashloka Pade Madhura Kariya. And just thinking that what Mahaprabhu is going through, he recited one very beautiful shloka from Srimad Bhagavatam and in a very, very sweet voice. And what is that verse? We'll do this 31st verse, which will be the basis of today's session. And from 32 to 38, Mahaprabhu himself will be revealing that what's there in this verse, what's the internal mood of this verse. So past few days, we have been seeing that this is, has been a, you know, a protocol in Chaitanya Charitamrita that in Antya Leela pastimes, Mahaprabhu would go into great ecstasy and he would tell Rai Ramananda or Sarup Damodar Goswami to recite some verses and they'll recite the verse which, which they could feel that this is equivalent to what Mahaprabhu's mood, understanding the, his mood, his emotions, they'll recite a particular verse. And then Mahaprabhu will hear that verse and will dive deep into that verse and will, you know, like cotton balls, he'll flock out all the cottons from those balls, from that single cotton ball, he'll take out more cotton balls and he'll try to explain you know, that verse. So this has been a protocol in this Chaitanya Charitamrita and Telila pastimes. So following the same thing, we will also go ahead with today's session also. At this time, Sarup Damodar Goswami, he recited the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, text 31. Kastrangyate <coughs> kalapadayat venu gita Sammohitara charitana chale trilokyam Trilokya shaubhagamidim cha nireksha rupam Yadgo dvijadrumam rigapulakani bipran So what does it mean? The translation says, the gopis said, my dear Lord Krishna, we'll see you you know, word by word also, just to give a general meaning what this Bhagavatam verse is. So actually, the purport Prabhupada says that this verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is 10, 29, 40. 10th canto, 29th chapter, verse number 40. So what does this verse actually general meaning is? That kastri ange, 
you know ka istri means what woman in the world the krishna anga anga here refers to krishna why because krishna is very dear to gopis just like the anga the body is very dear to oneself so they are referring krishna also as their anga ka istri o krishna what woman in this whole world trilok and in this three worlds kala padam rita venu geetha would not be attractive by the kala pad pad means again you know <clears throat> pad means actually the padya the <clears throat> padya means the words the rhythm right so the venu geet your the song of that flute that is coming out from your flute the song that is coming out it is sammohitara it is being captivated so which which lady in this world will not be attracted with the rhythm the sound that is coming out the sweet songs that are coming out from your wonderful flute charitanna chale trilokyam trilokyam means in this three world which lady then samhuit arya charit arya charit means aryan means one who belongs to a high class they are aryans so charitat means uh, the character the character of aryans is that they are very civilized very respectable so here you know these gopis actually they are reciting this verse to krishna and they are saying that you know because you played you know so beautiful song on your flute that we are being captivated and not only we they are saying which woman in this whole trilokyam this whole world will not be captivated and once they are captivated naturally their arya charita means the path of the chastity will be at stake you know because now they are they have loosened all their senses they are not in their senses because they have so much captivated by the song of your flute so definitely you know from they have been deviated from the path of the chastity they have trilokam shovag shovagam idam cha niriksha roopam your roopam you know your beauty niriksha those who can see niriksha means to observe nirikshan karna right to observe to see so those who see your roop your beauty you know so which beauty that beauty which is triloka shobagam which is the fortune of the three worlds your beauty is the fortune of the three worlds nobody can surpass your beauty your beauty is alokik adbhut right it is beyond this the three worlds so that beauty when somebody do nirikshan of that beauty when somebody observe that roop of yours then what to talk about the females the we the gopis it captivates abirhan abirhan means uh, this pulakhani abira means it captivates uh, it brings the ecstatic transformation in the heart of whom in the heart of go uh, that is cows in the hearts of dvija dvija means birds dvija dvija actually means twice born right so even the brahmanas they are also referred to as dvija why because the brahmanas are twice born once they take birth through their um, parents the womb of a mother and then the second birth happened during the time of initiation so therefore brahmanas are also known as dvija now uh the birds are also known as dvija because first they take birth when they are in a egg form and once the egg hatches and then the bird comes out so that's known as the second birth right so therefore dvija actually means twice born but dvija also refers sometimes to brahmana and sometimes to uh birds so the gopis are saying that the go that is the cows dvija that is the birds druma druma means trees then mriga mriga means deer animals like deers so what to talk about we gopis even those birds those cows those trees 
those forest animals like the trees, like the deer, they also have that ecstatic symptom on their body. Even their hairs get stand on end when they hear your beautiful flute and when they observe your beauty. Your beauty is, you know, so, so captivating that, you know, they are also stunned in jubilation. Translation, the gopi said, my dear Lord Krishna, where in that woman within the three worlds who would not be captivated by the rhythm of the sweet songs coming from your wonderful flute, who would not fall down from the path of chastity in this way? Your beauty is the most sublime within the three worlds. And upon seeing your beauty, even cows, birds, animals, and trees in the forest are stunned in jubilation. This verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.29.40 that Prabhupada says in his purport. So this is just the general meaning, uh, you know, that this gopis are saying, and, you know, we just saw the general meaning that what they are telling to Krishna. But we also want to know the context, right? That what made gopis say all this? So we'll go to Bhagavatam now and try to understand this, though Mahaprabhu will be explaining in the future verses, but I thought that let's have a context of this verse also that why this verse was spoken and in what pretext this verse was spoken. So as Prabhupada is quoting in his purport that this is from the 29th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So <clears throat> uh, this 29th chapter of the 10th canto Actually, we all know that the 10th canto have the five chapters which are, which are known as Rasa Pancha Adhyaya, the five chapters of a Rasa Lila, no? And that begins with this 29th chapter. So the 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. These five chapters of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam are known as Rasa Pancha Adhyaya. So, in this Rasalila pastimes, there are five stages. Okay, that's why this whole Rasalila thing is divided into five chapters. The first stage is when Rasalila praram, when you know they are planning to have that Rasalila. Okay, so then in that pastime only happens when Krishna in does his pastime, but then you know he. Uh, he vanishes away. He, he, that's Antardhanam happened. Krishna goes away from that Rasalila. Then second chapter is when Gopi, they are doing their Viraha. Gopi Viraha is there. Then the third chapter of Rasalila, that is 33rd chapter, is Gopi Geet, when they are singing the songs of separation. Then the fourth chapter, which is 32, is Punha Prakatam. You know, Krishna comes in front of the gopis. And finally, the fifth chapter, which is chapter number 33, is the Maharas, the Maharas Leela that happened. So it's only the five chapters, which are known as Rasa Panchadhyay, starts from 29th chapter of the 10th canto to 33rd chapter of this 10th canto. Now, this first chapter, that is 29th chapter, the first chapter of Rasa Panchadhyaya, which, which is also known as Bhagavan Sankalpa. Sankalpa means his desire to perform, a ras, to perform this Rasa Leela and he makes, uh, he enables with his potencies, he enables this whole thing to be uh, manifested, you know, the whole environment, the atmosphere to be manifested so that he can call upon gopis and gopis can come and they can perform the Rasa Leela. So actually one full moon night during this autumn season, when this whole atmosphere was scented with jasmine flowers, Supreme Personality of Godhead, our dear Lord Sri Krishna, he decided to pursue his romantic loving affairs from, with the gopis of Vrindavan. So just to fulfill he, his purposes, you know, what he did, he engaged his internal potency 
and she immediately created a very beautiful, exciting atmosphere of conjugal love to happen. And then our dear Lord Sri Krishna, he began to play flute, which was attracting the minds of beautiful young gopis. So that day what happened that when Krishna was playing his flute, the song of Krishna's flute, it entered through the ear of the gopis and through the ears it entered, that sound enters the inner treasure chamber of their heart. And as soon as it ended there, you know, it ended into the inner chamber of the hearts of the gopis, they just completely become oblivious of what they were doing. Some were actually milking cows and they stopped milking as soon as the sound of the flute entered into their ear and from ear it entered into their hearts. So some were milking the cows, they stopped milking. Some were curdling, some left the milk that was curdling on the stove. Some left the burning cakes, cakes burning in the ovens. And with great eagerness to meet their beloved, their lover, they all uh, went, they just went to meet Krishna. And uh, there were so many elderly gopis also who were feeding milk to their infants. They stopped doing their personal service to their husband. They left their crying babies. They gave up practically all their duties and they went to meet Krishna. So this was the whole scene that was created. And then uh, <clears throat> after that, you know, when Krishna saw all the gopis, uh, you know, arrived there in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the night, you know, very beautifully dressed up and he greeted them. He, he greeted all of them very nicely. And he said, oh, most fortunate ladies, why all you have come here? What should I do for you? Please tell me, is everything well in Vrindavan, in Raja, where you are coming from? Everything is fine in your homes. How come in the middle of the night in this dead forest, you all are here? What can I do for you? Now, this way, Krishna once, you know, when he was responding, Gopis felt really bewildered that how, you know, with so much of formality, Krishna was asking these questions that is everything well at your home? Why in this middle of the night you are here in this middle of the forest, you are, all are here. What made you, you know, leave everything and just come here? So the Gopis, you know, they became bewildered. So just to respond to Krishna's call, and to enjoy conjugal love, they said that we are here and now you are asking us that why we are here. So Krishna said, you know, this night is quite frightening. There are so many wild creatures that are moving around here. And this is not a proper place for any woman and uh, to come here. So I kindly request you all to please go back to your respective homes. Why you guys all are here? You shouldn't be here. This is not good. After all, your family members, your mothers, your fathers, even your brothers or your husbands, they must be certainly searching for you. So don't cause any kind of anxiety for them. Okay, now you want to see me. You were attracted with the flute. You have come here. You have seen me. You have seen this beautiful moonlight forest. You have seen this forest, which is full of flowers. And you have also felt that fragrant breeze that is coming from Yamuna. You have felt all that. But now, now I request you to go back to your village and carry on your respective duties. You should maintain your chastity and you should serve your husband and you should also take care of your crying babies. Why you all are here? Please, please go back. And then gopis were still stunned. They were standing stunned. They couldn't understand why Krishna is behaving so in a very formal way with all of them. They, they were thinking that it's Krishna who is calling them by playing this particular note. 
on which that bewilders us, that bewilder our mind, that particular note he is playing. So that itself is a great indication that Krishna wants us to be here to enjoy his conjugal pastimes. But just see how Krishna is behaving. But they didn't say even a word and they were just stunned and they were standing there. So Krishna himself was saying, well, now because you know, gopis were not responding, so Krishna was, you know, making up his own talks. So he's saying, well, if you think that you are, you have come here out of great love for me, then I really congratulate all of you because you have done a commendable job on your part. Because after all, all the living entities, they possess some natural affection for me. And because all of them possess natural affection for me, so you also did. You know, you also did possess that natural affection for me. And so you have left everything and you came in this middle of the night, in the middle of the forest. So, you know, this job, whatever you have done is commendable. And I really want to congratulate you. But the highest religious duty for any woman is to be chaste, is to serve their husband, is to take care of their family and children. So he was telling that, I, I, I'm fine with it that you have come here, but now I request all of you to please go back because women who desire a good destination in next life should always treat her husband as a spiritual master and should serve him. Even if husbands fall down from that spiritual practices, still it's a duty of a woman to serve her husband. And for a woman having an extramarital affair, you know, the affair which is outside their marriage will ruin their respect and reputation. And then they will always be condemned. So Krishna actually was hinting to gopis that you are married, you have children, you have your husband, you have your family, you have your parents. So please be with them, serve them. That's your duty. You know, coming in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the night is, you know, this way you will ruin your own reputation and you will be always be condemned. So no need for you all to come here, but even if you have been attracted by my flute sound or whatsoever or attracted by my beauty, but you have come here, you have seen the environment, you have seen the atmosphere, you have felt the breezes of Yamuna that is coming from Yamuna. So you have done everything now, I request you to please go back. And then, you know, Krishna said something very, very philosophical. And he said that actually, devotional process, love for me arises from devotional process. And what is that devotional process? That devotional process is hearing about me, seeing me in the deity form, meditating on me, or very faithfully chanting my glories, my mantras. You know, this way the love will arouse in the heart and that is the processes of devotional service. Just by having a physical proximity, you cannot achieve the transcendental love for me. So please, O oh gopis, this is the time. Please go back home. Now, hearing this, you know, surpasses all the boundaries for the gopis to be silent. Hearing these unpleasant words coming out from their lover from, from the mouth of Krishna, the gopis, they immediately became morose. They did not know what to do. Their hopes were frustrated. And in that great anxiety, they, their tears, you know, they started flowing from their eyes, washing away the mascara, the kajal, the black oint, the, uh, ointment that was anointing their beautiful face. But the gopis didn't cry a lot. Finally, they all wiped off their tears and in a choked voice, as well as depicting some transcendental anger, they started begin to speak. Till that time, Krishna was speaking. And this time, uh, the gopis, they thought enough of Krishna. Now we cannot bear anything else. So they just wiped off their tears and they said, why are you talking to us in such a cruel way? 
you know why you are rejecting us you are the one who called us by playing your beautiful flute you know the sound of your beautiful flute so we have renounced all our worldly duties for you krishna and you should reciprocate us and instead of reciprocating us you are telling us to go back the gopi said enough of krishna enough we have heard enough of your philosophy a philosophical advice on what is the religious duty of a woman how they should behave how they should take care of their family their children their husband enough of it we heard enough and we do agree with whatever you are saying you know while principle wise well whatever you have said is perfectly right we do agree to the principles of service that you know you really want us to do but you only said that the real service has to be offered to someone who is the dear most friend of all the embodied souls and you are the one who is the dear most friend of all the embodied souls after all what benefit are we going to get to serve our material husband our children who are basically the simply bondage for us and giving us trouble why aren't you allowing us to serve you we are not rejecting this point that we should serve them and we have been serving them but now it's you only you are the one who is calling us you are the one who is uh forcing us to lose our, our chastity to to abandon our chastity and that's why in the middle of the night in the middle of the forest we are here and now when we have renounced everything and is uh, you know hankering for your loving association here you are condemning us and telling us to go away it's not fair krishna you are being so cruel to us till today we were engaged in all our household activities but the moment we heard your flute you captivate our mind and we are left with no logic whatsoever and now you know we are no longer also interested in our household activities so we are not going to go back at any point what to talk about go back even to take one step back away from you is not possible for us and you are telling us to go back to vraja what are we going to do there once we go back because our mind is absorbed in you in your thoughts you have captivated our mind and even if we go back we'll go back with our material bodies our mind will be here only so what's the use of going back what this dead body is going to do even if we go back to our husband or to our parents or to our to perform all our worldly duties because our mind is here so do one thing krishna you know you please either give us our mind back to us or accept us you know in whatever position we are accept us or give us our mind back and if you cannot do anything then you know <clears throat> the <clears throat> what will happen is that there is a fire within our heart that fire is burning okay that fire of having that conjugal past time with you that fire of lust is burning in our heart so either you satisfy that fire by giving the nectar of your lips the fire that has been ignited by you only so you are the culprit krishna it's not that we have lost our chastity and we have come forward to uh, experience that conjugal love with you you are the one who ignited that fire with your sweet song of your flute in us so either you are going to extinguish that fire and satisfy us by giving the nectar of your lips or what are we going to do is we will give up our bodies in that same fire of separation so this way gopis were literally in anger chastising krishna that whatever you are doing to us is not good you know you are not doing good they are saying oh krishna your lotus feet is so glorious that nobody can ab abandon them and we are here to seek shelter of your lotus feet 
So instead of reciprocating with us, you are abandoning us. You are telling us to go back. Our hearts are burning with the desire to serve you as an insignificant maid servant, and we are here. So that time, you know, when they said this, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writes a beautiful commentary on it, and he said that. When Krishna, when these gopis, they said that uh, you know we are here uh, so that you accept us as your maid servant. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that as soon as Krishna hears, heard this, he said, "Okay, you want to become my maid servant? Then you must be expecting some payment, right? So." do you really want some payment or you are offering this free service to me so the gopi said oh krishna from childhood you know you are with us and you have been purchasing us with the payment of your beautiful smile that smile which is worth millions and millions and millions of times more than we can ever think of so this is the payment your smile is the payment so don't worry we don't want anything more from you your smile is the payment the, the nectar of your lip is the payment so we are here we are your ashulk dasika right we are your maid servants who is going to offer our services free of cost the only thing as a payment we want is your sweet smile and then krishna says what are you talking about o gopis your husband is not going to accept all this they are not going to tolerate this behavior of yours and this is not a chaste behavior that you all are you know depicting so they will you know they will not tolerate it and they will complain it to kamsa and then the gopi said o oh, krishna now you are threatening us with the fear of kamsa we know that your arms are so strong that when your arms can protect the whole vrajvasis when you lifted govardhan hill so aren't your arms going to protect us also from that fear of kamsa we are pretty sure so don't give us that kind of threatening you protect us from the tribe of mahendra so we are pretty sure that your arms will certainly Uh, kill that comes also and will protect us so we are not fearful of kamsa's fear but then krishna says i cannot make others wives my maid servants you know this is quite unethical this is not good on my part you know you are putting my fame down what people around will say that i have accepted somebody else's wives as my maid servant well this is not ethical what are you talking about and that time gopi said oh krishna you are already carrying the wife of narayan that is lakshmi devi as a shrivastha mark as a gondal line and on your chest you are already carrying her and uh, you are allowing her to be there on your chest and you know that she is the wife of narayana from vaikuntha so now don't give this kind of excuse that you cannot accept anybody else's wives to be your maid servant because your lotus feet is been served even though that she has a position on the chest but she is still serving your lotus feet and not only her even tulasi devi is serving your lotus feet and all the other your servants they are also hankering to serve your lotus feet so don't make such excuses to us this this is not going to lead us to anywhere we are not going to make one single step away from you we are not going to go back to vraja and after saying this the gopis recited this verse and they said my dear krishna what woman within the three worlds who would not be captivated by the rhythm of the sweet song that is coming from the wonderful flute so they are saying forget about us we the gopis none of the women in the three world will not be captivated will not be captivated by this sweet song that is coming who would not fall down from the path of chastity in this way so krishna 
don't make all those excuses of dharma of religion no you cannot make those excuses anybody can fall down from the path of chastity so your beauty why because your beauty is most sublime within the three worlds it surpasses the beauty of all the three worlds so krishna don't make all these excuses and please accept us please accept us and then to this verse also vishwanath chakravarti thakur makes this comment he writes the commentary and he says that <clears throat> you gopis you will be the live example for the future world so if you are going to give up on this duty what effect you will have you will make on the heart of other women who are so faithful to their husbands you will corrupt them also and then vishwanath chakravarti thakur himself quotes this logic and that logic is that a shameless person contaminates not only himself but he also contaminates anyone who comes into contact of that shameless person so krishna is saying oh gopis lead by the example if you will behave in such a way you will impact others also who are chaste to their husband and what example you will be setting to them and then <clears throat> then he said that and on top of that you are insulting me that i have taken somebody else's woman and allowed her to stay on my chest that is the golden line so in this way you are also insulting not only me but you are insulting lakshmi devi also that lakshmi devi is not chaste that she left narayan and she has appeared on my chest why you are doing this why you are offending lakshmi devi and then the gopi says oh krishna we are not blaming lakshmi devi at all okay and don't say that rather it is you who is blaming us who is really chastising us that we have loosened all our chastity then the gopis in very angry way said that you are the one who bewildered us first of all you bewildered us with the sweet tones of your flute and now one wins we have been drawn with that melody of your flute and we have left all our aryan characteristics our you know the aryan behavior and we have uh, staked our prescribed duties in all respect and came here just to meet you and now you are telling us to abandon all that and you know to leave this place and go back what is this you know we have left everything so this is not our fault it is only and only your fault that you are first of all bewildering us and when we left everything you are giving the whole philosophical advice that we should go back well this is not fair it's you who did it so you are the one who is going to bear the cost and bear the consequence of it so this way you know this is the commentary by vishwanath chakravarti thakur where he envisioned the past times in his samadhi and therefore he reveal in his commentary that this is all the a conversation the back and forth conversation happened between krishna and the gopis and then mahaprabhu he also started uh, explaining in the same line so we'll just go through the verses because we have already explained that what actually happened so text number 32 suni prabhu gopi bhave avishta haila bhagavate ra shloka artha karite lagila upon hearing this verse mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with the ecstasy of the gopis and taking the side of the gopis he started began to explain these verses हाईला गोपी भावशेषा खैला रास प्रवशेषा कृष्णे रशुनी उपेक्षा वचन कृष्णे रामोख हास्यवाणी त्यागे ताह सत्यमानी रोषे कृष्ण देना ओलाहान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु से द गोपीज एंटर द एरेना ऑफ द रास डांस इन एक्सटेसी बट आफ्टर हियरिंग कृष्णस वर्ड ऑफ नेग्लिजेंस एंड डिटैचमेंट they understood that he was going to renounce them thus they began to chastise him in anger so we saw that how <clears throat> krishna neglected them told them go back 
and now gopis heard all that but after all they just can't bear anything and they started chastising krishna and anger nagara kaha tumhi kari anishchaya ei trijakta bhari ache yata yogi nari tomara venu kaha na akarshya so gopis are saying oh dear lover oh krishna please answer one question who among all the youthful women within this universe is not attracted by the sound of your flute so basically gopis are blaming krishna for playing that flute and calling them in the middle of the night in the middle of that forest and after they came just giving them philosophical advice to go back so they are saying no well that's not the point that you should not do कैलाजगते वेणुध्वनि सिद्ध मंत्र योगिनि दुतिहान मोहे नारी मान महकांता बदन आर्य पथ छादन अनि तो माया कर समर्पण सो ब्यूटीफुल गोपीज आर सेइंग कैला जगते द होल वर्ल्ड इज बीइंग अट्रैक्टेड बाय योर वेणुध्वनि या एंड देन your siddha mantra yogini so the yogini is she is they are saying that the sound of the flute is the yogini is a messenger her name is yogini in the form of a yogini she is coming and delivering your message to us as a messenger right and she is a female she is a nari right and she is enchanting us and telling us and giving your message to us she is giving your message to us right maha <clears> utkantha <throat> and she is creating that great anxiety on us because of which arya path chadana we have left our arya path the chastity the we, we are supposed to walk on the religious principles we are supposed to be chaste so we left that religious principles we left that aryan uh, pratha the the regulative principles that we have to follow chada chadana we have left everything and we have come here ani tomai kare samarpana and we have come here to surrender unto you when you play your flute the vibration acts like a messenger in the form of a yogini which is perfect in the art of chanting mantras this messenger enchants all the women in the universe and attracts them to you then she finally increases their great anxiety and she is the one who induces us to give up all our regulative principles of obeying our superiors finally she is the one who forcibly brings us to you to surrender to you and now dharma chaya venu dware hane kataksha kama sare lajja bhaya sakala chadaya ए रोषा कही पति त्यागे दोषा धर्मे कहा न धर्म से खाया सो नाउ गोपीज आर सेइंग ओ कृष्णा नाउ वी हैव लेफ्ट ऑल दैट रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल्स दैट धर्म छाड़या यू नो वी हैव गिवन अप बाय हियरिंग द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ योर फ्लूट वी हैव गिवन अप एवरीथिंग एंड kana kataksha kama sare and you do you know with your side long glance by the arrows of the lust we have given up we have been so much attracted by your form by your rupam by your kataksha by your side long glance and we have left everything what lajja we have left all kind of shame bhaya we have left even fear sakala chhaadya we have given up everything abe amaya khori rasha you know now after becoming angry they are saying kati pati tyage dosha now you are blaming us that we are giving up on our husbands also you are fault finding in us you are doing fault finding in us that we are not chaste we are giving up our husbands we are giving up our family members and, and after fault finding doing that fault finding in us then you are also dharmika saksikaya now you are teaching us what is the religious principles first of all you are the one who provoked us to leave our chastity come here in the middle of the night in the middle of the forest and now when we came here now you are teaching us that what is the dharmika 
is not sane, Krishna. Why you are doing this? The vibration of your flute accompanied by your glance, which pierces us forcibly with the arrows of lust, it induces us to ignore the religious principles of religious life, sorry, regulative principles of religious life. Thus, we become excited by the lusty desires and come to you giving up all kind of shame and fear, lajja and bhaya. And but now you are angry with us. You are finding fault in us with our violating religious principles and leaving our homes and husbands. And you are instructing us about religious principles. Now we have become helpless. Anya katha anya mana bahire anya acharana eisha veshatha paripati tumi jana parihasa haya narira sarvanasha chada esa dakuti nati. Now gopis are saying, well, we don't know, Krishna, what is there in your mind. Your words and your actions are not matching. We know that this is all a well-planned trick. And you know how to make jokes. You know because that causes the complete annihilation of women. But we can understand your real mind, words, and behavior are different. Therefore, please give up all these clever tricks. So gopis are saying, oh, Krishna, your words and actions are not matching. You know, sometimes when we also come across to some people or some devotees, you know, they'll say something, they'll do something. So definitely we'll have this experience that, oh, this person is talking something and doing something. So that means their words and actions are not matching. So here also gopis are chastising Krishna in return and saying that, oh, Krishna, you know, what are you talking about? You are the one who called us. And when we left everything, renounced everything and came to you, and now you are abandoning us. And you are not only abandoning us, you are getting angry on us that we are no more chaste women of this world. And not only that, you are finding fault in us that we are the one who left our husband. Hey, Krishna, we were not the one who left. We were doing our religious duties till now. You are the one who you know, who played that particular note and that sound, you know, as a yogini, she came and she carried your message and she gave that message to us. And just we are reciprocating to your message. So what's our fault? So you are the one who called us. So first you call us and then you chastise us. Well, this is not acceptable, Krishna. And then last verse for today. Venu nada amrita ghole, amrita samana mita bole, amrita samana bhushana sanjita. Tina amrite hare kana, hare mana, hare prana, kemane nari dari, nari beka chieta. The nectarian buttermilk of your flute's vibration, the nectar of your sweet words and the nectarian sound of your ornaments. So what are the three? Amrita Ghole, Venunad Amrita Ghole, then Amrita Samana Bhushana, then your Mita Bole. So there are three Amrita. First is the sound of the flute, which is also compared to as nectar. Then the sound of your words, your sweet words, they are also compared to as nectar. And then the sound of your ornaments, bhushana, which is also a nectar. All these three nectars, they combine together. And when they all combine together, and when they attract our ears, our minds, our lives, what do you think, Krishna? Will we be able to survive in any way? No, we will die. You are killing us. You are murdering us. You know, you are murdering through this, uh, this nectar of your flute's vibration. You are murdering us through the nectar of your sweet words. And you are murdering us through the nectar sound of your ornaments. All these, these, these three things combined together, they are captivating our eyes, oh sorry, our ears, our mind. And not only that, even our lives, that we have renounced everything. And now by abandoning us, not reciprocating with us, you are practically murdering us. You are killing us. 
So yes, we are here as your insignificant maid servant, as your Ashulk Dasika. You have the whole right to murder us. So then the gopi said that, yes, you can murder us. You know, let us die into this fire of separation. That fire that you have ignited, let us die in that fire of that uh, that fire of separation that you have ignited. And if you don't want that, then, oh, Krishna, leave everything and just execute the plan that you have that you want to enjoy your conjugal pastimes. So the fire that you have ignited, please, please extinguish it and give us your loving embrace. So this way, the gopis were chastising Krishna. And as soon as Sarup Damodar Goswami recited that verse, the same ecstatic symptoms also aroused that ecstatic symptom of anger this time, the transcendental anger aroused in the heart of Mahaprabhu. And he couldn't bear. And in Radha Bhav, he tried to explain this beautiful verse that was quoted by Radha Ramananda. So we'll stop here. And this is not the end. In future, Mahaprabhu will quote another verse taking the side of the gopis. And then he will explain further that works. So very, very beautiful uh, verses are coming up. Stay tuned for the next speaker. I know they'll do much more justice to it. Uh, but this was today's my humble attempt. So just accept as a Sargrahi Vaishnavas. Uh, please accept whatever, you know, uh, that attempt that I tried to make. So thank you all so much. Hare Krishna, Krishna Sundimataji, you did very, very, very nice to get sharing after. Thank you very much. If anyone has any question or comment, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Kamadiki Mataji, for always showering your blessings. Thank you very much for inviting me. With this letter, and we are very grateful to you. I hope you get better soon. Looks like nobody has any question. We can end the call here, Mataji. Yes, yeah, sure, Mataji. If there are no more questions, then for sure. Hare Krishna Mataji, Tanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna Sita Priti Mataji. Uh, we didn't see you today, so it was something was missing. <laughs> but then they were, like, it's wonderful Mataji, the way you narrated. In the morning only like with the kids class, we had this Krishna is, all, Krishna is attracted to all women. <laughs> mm. This point we have, this character, this quality of the Lord we had. So just remembering. <laughs> yes, Mataji. Okay. So, Mataji, with this reference, I guess, like, uh, Krishna is attracted to all women. Kubja's example also can be stated, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I missed that the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful class, Mataji. Like, I know for the further verses will uh, tell more about the details. Yes. But when we come to this verse, we feel, oh, Krishna, how like how, how is he treating the gopis in such a way? Yeah. How and... can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> no sense because... on the side of Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> because we remember when we have to do some services when we are back to back, mm. you feel that you are neglecting your house and then you are doing the services. So many times it happens there. Right? Yeah, of, so, course, of course, yes. <laughs> so then I think, like, is it uh, like um, getting attracted towards Krishna and doing the service, or is it getting attracted towards the service? I don't know. There's always that um, that dilemma. With me. Krishna should be in the center. He should not be attracted to a service, but yes, he should be attracted to Krishna. But okay. How can we show our attraction to Krishna through service, right? By doing some service. So as yes. you said that, yes, sometimes we also have to leave so many household things just to do some service for Krishna. That's that's our love, right? We want to do it. But we should do it in the mood, not as a matter of duty, but that's a matter of love. Love for Krishna. Just like chanting, right? There are ways of chanting. Some chants out of duty, some chants out of vows, and some chant out of love. So chanting process is same, right? That we have to chant. 
Now, whether we want to chant out of love, whether we want to chant out of duty, or whether we want to chant out of some fear that we have given, you know, vow to our spiritual master, there are different levels. So same here, yes. when we go for some service, there are different levels. We want to do it a matter of duty. We want to do it as a, because we are Brahman initiated and, you know, we have given this word to our spiritual master that we'll do deity worship or it's just because of love that we are so much attracted and we want to do it. So everything has these yes. three phases. Yes, Mataji. Sure. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful class. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Krishna Kirtida Sundari Mataji. Thank you, Mataji, for a very, very beautiful class. As always, you know, your classes, um, they are so much to the point and so beautifully described. Um, especially, I really love those verses that were talking about the three different sounds that are captivating from Krishna, his voice, the flute, and his body, the ornaments. Uh, it was very nice, Mataji. The entire class was so easy was like as if we were visualizing the whole thing. Thank you so much for this. Uh, it's a, these are all hard verses, <laughs> but you yeah. made it really simple. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. and do take care of your health, Mataji. You really sound sick, so please take care of us. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. But these verses, you know. I'll still say that credit goes to Shla Prabhupada if he would, and of course our Acharyas, if they would have not simplified, you know, with their beautiful commentaries, it would have been impossible for a person like me to speak something on it. So our glories to them, they made us so simplified and they made us this access to this Krishna train. Otherwise, it is all together on a different level. We, a person like me, it's just like a dwarf touching a moon. You know, as Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami also quotes, right? As a dwarf touching the moon. So it's impossible. But if the moon decides to come down, then even a dwarf can touch the moon. <laughs> so, Very beautiful. Very beautiful. So the same thing, you know, they have made it so simplified, so easy for us. And I'm just repeating their words. Practically repeated the whole chapter, the whole 29th chapter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Speaking. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Randa Pranam, Randa Mataji. Randa Pranam. Randa Pranam, Mataji. Thank you so much, uh, Mataji, for a beautiful class. Uh, although you're not well, you share such a beautiful nectar, Mataji. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't have questions, just wanted to, uh, I mean, just have lots of appreciation and a lot of, like, being very grateful for this class. And um, I did not know, Mataji, you were not well. I'm sorry, I bombarded with you about you with a lot of uh, questions yesterday. <laughs> no worries at all, Mataji. And please don't I, worry about that, Mataji. You just I, please put care of yourself and please get I got your questions and uh, I'll answer you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mataji. Please don't take. worry about that. This health is, you know, it's a temporary body. Something or the other will definitely go on. But services should not stop, right? Till the time we can carry on, services should not stop. So don't worry. Yeah, it's a practice. It's a phase. It has come. It will go. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for all your prayers and wishes and blessings. Thank you, Vinda Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. ृष्ण <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mataji Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, closing the call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mataji Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण